A major reason you may have unhealthy relationships in your life is because you haven't set healthy boundaries. The truth is that when we come across conflict in our lives, the easier approach often feels like it would be to ignore it and walk away in the opposite direction. But walking towards the mess, having those awkward conversations, and addressing the situation that is causing disharmony is what helps us because it gives us the opportunity to set up boundaries in our relationships. A healthy boundary sets a clear expectation on how you expect someone else to act in relation to you and clearly explains the consequences that will happen if someone doesn't honor your boundary. Now, if you're someone who has trouble setting boundaries, you probably are already uncomfortable with the thought of setting up a boundary. The idea might even feel harsh or mean-spirited, but I promise it's not. God was actually the one who introduced boundaries by introducing consequences for behaviors. Throughout history, God has continually set standards for his people. Do not eat from the tree or you will have to leave the Garden of Eden. Do not disobey the Ten Commandments. If you do, your life will be very difficult. You see, God gives boundaries to us as a gift because he loves us and we can do the same. We can set boundaries as a gift for those that we love. Now, as a pastor, people often share with me that they find it hard to set boundaries in their relationships. One place it can be difficult to set up some boundaries is in our extended families. I often hear comments like, Pastor Jessica, uh, my family member is uh, pro at passive aggressively trapping me into feeling guilty for not being able to do more for them. What would a healthy boundary look like in that situation? Well, We need to remember that a healthy boundary will always give clear expectations and define clear consequences that will happen if the expectations are not met. So a healthy boundary in response to a family member making you feel guilty might be a conversation that goes something along these lines. When you continue to make comments that I can't talk to you every day, especially after I have explained that this is a very busy season for me, You are falsely inferring that I do not care about you. So if you continue to make me feel guilty about my lack of free time or continue to make passive aggressive statements about that I don't seem to care about you, I will need to pause on the weekly dinners that we do currently have scheduled. Now, another place I'm often asked about boundary setting is with a partner or spouse who maybe is making unhealthy choices in their lives. Maybe it's in the area of substance abuse. A healthy boundary conversation in that situation might sound like you saying to your partner, well, you may continue to choose not to deal with your substance abuse problems, but I will not continue to expose myself and or our children to this chaos. The next time you come home drunk, the children and I will leave the house and we will not return until you have dealt with your problem. Friends, boundaries clearly define what we are responsible for and what the other person is responsible for. And then there's the parenting situations. Do our children even need boundaries? Well, the experts would answer with a resounding yes. Setting boundaries can create confident children who are later able to say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things. You see, establishing boundaries for children helps children learn that they are responsible for themselves and their own actions, and not the actions of others. Now, boundaries in parenting look different depending on your child's age. For a young child, the conversation might sound something like this. I've asked you to put your dishes away in the sink, but I keep finding cups everywhere in our house. The next time you choose not to put your dirty dishes in the sink, you will not be able to use the family dishes moving forward. Instead, you can use a paper plate that you will need to purchase from your allowance. Friends, children will learn very fast to respect a boundary when it is attached to a consequence that they would rather avoid. For an older child, boundary setting might sound something like this. Well, I've asked you multiple times to fill my vehicle up with gas after you borrow it. When I get into the car after you have used it and the gas tank is empty, you are communicating to me that you do not appreciate me letting you use my vehicle. So moving forward, if you choose not to fill up my tank with gas the next time you borrow the vehicle, I will not be able to let you borrow this vehicle again. 
Friends, establishing boundaries is one of the greatest gifts that you can give to your child. And upholding them will be a gift to them as well. Because allowing your child to fall and fail will help them discover that our behaviors have consequences to your boundaries and to the boundaries in every relationship that they will ever have in the future. Because the way you teach your child to respect boundaries now will become a model for how they will set boundaries in their own future relationships. So be careful, stay firm, and stay consistent. Friends, setting boundaries is one of the most loving things that you can do for another person because you are giving them the gift of accountability. So let's be people who love our people enough to set boundaries and hold each other accountable.